Welcome, everyone. Glad you're here. It is time for morning prayer at St. Peter's. I'm just calling up the Facebook live feed, and uh, we're glad to have you with us. I will also um, give thanks for the opportunity to gather with you on the feast of Irenaeus of Lyon. So Irenaeus is a, a really interesting guy. And now, for some reason, my feed is not showing up as St. Peter. There it is. Ah, uh, Irenaeus of Lyon lived uh, from the early 100s, just over the line into the 200s. So from the second century, just over the lip into the third. Uh, he was born in Smyrna. That's important because uh, you should know that Polycarp are one of our favorites, uh, truly one of our favorite of, of the martyrs, early martyrs of the church, uh, was his bishop probably baptized him, and Polycarp heard Luke preach. So, uh, John. Which, John, sorry, John preached. So we have uh, Irenaeus as only three degrees of separation from uh, from Jesus, and that's impressive uh, if you think about it. Not even Kevin Bacon can manage that. Right, so Irenaeus was an interesting figure. He wound up being a uh, successor to Pothinus, I believe I pronounced that correctly, in what is now Lyon, and, uh, and he was uh, truly a remarkable figure. Uh, his works survive. There are other ones that Eusebius and others note that we do not have now, but one of the things that he is most known for is his letters uh, against the heretics. He had a bit of a polemic battle with those who followed Gnostic traditions, and uh, particularly the Valentinians. Uh, that was a her heretical controversy back in the day. I know you all woke up this morning thinking, who are the Valentinians? I'm not even gonna go into that because we have to do morning prayer and get on with our day. But anyway, Adversus Heresies is one of the seminal classics of patristic study of the early church. Irenaeus himself uh, was truly a remarkable human. Um, he was uh, a counselor to popes. He was a uh, counsel to kings. One of the challenges that he faced was during the Aurelian persecutions, Marcus Aurelius. Uh, there was a persecution that broke out against Christians, and uh, he was one of the ones who really struggled to uh, keep the community together in that. Laura, you want to add anything to Irenaeus of Lyon? Um, apostolic secession that was important to him. Very much so. And his thing was, we have to look to Rome as, as the premise of Tapar, as the first among equals of the apostolic seats. Yep, you're right. What else? Uh, what Over else? The bonus round. Yes. Uh, so, so much. But his, he, he placed his own authority as coming, again, uh, three degrees of separation from Jesus. So his argument was, I know the guy who knew the guy who knew Jesus. So we're we're right because we're getting it straight from Jesus's lips. It's almost like he's from Jersey. As am I. <laughs> All right, folks, we're ready for morning prayer. Please like and subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications. Give us that thumbs up. Let us know you're out there, how we can pray for you, and also continue to welcome you home to St. Peter's. If you're watching live on Facebook, of course, you can throw in your concerns and intercessions and thanksgivings uh, before the end of the office. We'll make sure we lift those up. If they come in on YouTube after the fact or on Facebook after the fact, of course, we will lift those up at evening prayer this evening. We have a busy day today, of course. The uh, Alice's Cup Food Pantry is open all day. Community Supper is going to be served tonight with the Mini Mart Food Pantry. Big announcement coming with that soon. Then on top of that, we also have Bible study this morning, uh, Holy Eucharist at noon on Wednesdays, and then some pastoral calls before we finally close the day. So a lot going on. Let's go to morning prayer. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen.
Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us all our sins through the grace of Jesus Christ, strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. O God, let our mouth proclaim your praise and your glory all the day long. Praise to the holy and undivided Trinity, one God, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Please join me in unison for the antiphon and invitatory. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, let us adore him. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, let us adore him. Psalms 101 and 109. I'll offer the odd verses. Please respond with the even. I will sing of loyalty and of justice. To you, O Lord, I will sing. I will study the way that is blameless. When shall I attain it? I will walk with integrity of heart within my house. I will not set before my eyes anything that is base. I hate the work of those who fall away. It shall not cling to me. Perverseness of heart shall be far from me. I will know nothing of evil. One who secretly slanders a neighbor I will destroy. A haughty look and an arrogant heart I will not tolerate. I will look with favor on the faithful in the land so that they may live with me. Whoever walks in the way that is blameless shall minister to me. No one who practices deceit shall remain in my house. No one who utters lies shall continue in my presence. Morning by morning, I will destroy all the wicked in the land, cutting off all evildoers from the city of the Lord. Do not be silent, O God of my praise, for wicked and deceitful mouths are opened against me. Speaking against me with lying tongues, they beset me with words of hate and attack me without cause. In return for my love, they accuse me, even while I make prayer for them. So they reward me evil for good and hatred for my love. They say, appoint a wicked man against him. Let an accuser stand on his right. When he is tried, let him be found guilty. Let his prayer be counted as sin. May his days be few. May another seize his position. May his children be orphans and his wife a widow. May his children wander about and beg. May they be driven out of the ruins they inhabit. May the creditor seize all that he has. May strangers plunder the fruits of his toil. May there be no one to do him a kindness, nor anyone to pity his orphaned children. May his posterity be cut off. May his name be blotted out in the second generation. May the iniquity of his father be remembered before the Lord, and do not let the sin of his mother be blotted out. Let them be before the Lord continually and may his memory be cut off from the earth. For he did not remember to show kindness, but pursued the poor and needy and the brokenhearted to their death. He loved to curse, let curses come on him. He did not like blessing, may it be far from him. He clothed himself with cursing as his coat, may it soak into his body like water, like oil into his bones. May it be like a garment that he wraps around himself, like, like a, a belt that he wears every day. May that be the reward of my accusers from the Lord, of those who speak evil against my life. But you, O Lord, my Lord, act on my behalf for your name's sake, because your steadfast love is good, deliver me. For I am poor and needy, and my heart is pierced within me. I am gone like a shadow at evening. I am shaken off like a locust. 
My knees are weak through fasting. My body has become gaunt. I am an object of scorn to my accusers. When they see me, they shake their heads. Help me, O Lord my God. Save me according to your steadfast love. Let them know that this is your hand. You, O Lord, have done it. Let them curse, but you will bless. Let my assailants be put to shame. May your servant be glad. May my accusers be clothed with dishonor. May they be wrapped in their own shame as a mantle. With my mouth, I will give great thanks to the Lord. I will praise the Lord in the midst of the throng. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. From the day that the ark was lodged at kiriath Jerim, a long time passed, some 20 years, and all the house of Israel lamented after the Lord. Then Samuel said to all the house of Israel, if you are returning to the Lord with all your heart, then put away the foreign gods and the Ashtarts from among you. Direct your heart to the Lord and serve her only, and she will deliver you out of the hand of the Philistines. So Israel put away the Baals and the Ashtarts, and they served the Lord only. Then Samuel said, gather all Israel at Mitzpah, and I will pray to the Lord for you. So they gathered at Mitzpah and drew water and poured it out before the Lord. They fasted that day and said, we have sinned against the Lord. And Samuel judged the people of Israel at Mitzpah. When the Philistines heard that the people of Israel had gathered at Mitzpah, the lords of Philistines went up against Israel. And when the people of Israel heard of it, they were afraid of the Philistines. The people of Israel said to Samuel, do not cease to cry out to the Lord our God for us and pray that she may save us from the hand of the Philistines. So Samuel took a sucking lamb and offered it as a whole burnt offering to the Lord. Samuel cried out to the Lord for Israel, and the Lord answered him. As Samuel was offering up the burnt offering, the Philistines drew near to attack Israel. But the Lord thundered with a mighty voice that day against the Philistines and drew them into confusion, and they were routed before Israel. And the men of Israel went out of Mitzpah and pursued the Philistines and struck them down as far as beyond beth -car. Then Samuel took a stone and set it up between Mitzpah and Jeshunah and named it Ebenezer, for he said, Thus far the Lord has helped us. So the Philistines were subdued and did not again enter the territory of Israel. The hand of the Lord was against the Philistines all the days of Samuel. The towns that the Philistines had taken from Israel were restored to Israel, from Ekron to Gath, and Israel recovered their territory from the hand of the Philistines. There was peace also between Israel and the Amorites. Samuel judged Israel all the days of his life. He went on a circuit year by year to Bethel, Gilgal, and Mitzpah, and he judged Israel in all these places. Then he would come back to Ramah, for his home was there. He administered justice there to Israel and built there an altar to the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our first canticle, the third song of Isaiah, together. Arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. For behold, darkness covers the land, deep gloom enshrouds the peoples, but over you the Lord will rise, and God's glory will appear upon you. Nations will stream to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawning. Your gates will always be open. By day or night they will never be shut. They will call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no more be heard in your land, ruin or destruction within your borders. You will call your walls salvation and all your portals praise. The sun will no more be your light by day. By night, you will not need the brightness of the moon. The Lord will be your everlasting light and your God will be your glory. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. 
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Now during those days, when the disciples were increasing in number, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution of food. And the twelve called together the whole community of the disciples and said, It is not right that we should neglect the word of the God in order to wait on tables. Therefore, friends, select from among yourselves seven men of good standing, full of the spirit and of wisdom, whom we may appoint to this task, while we, for our part, will devote ourselves to prayer and to serving the word. What they said pleased the whole community, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit, together with Philip, Pro Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch. They had these men stand before the apostles who prayed and laid their hands on them. The word of God continued to spread. The number of disciples increased greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests became obedient to the faith. Stephen, full of grace and power, did great wonders and signs among the people. Then some of those who belonged to the synagogue of the freedmen, as it was called, Cyrenians, Alexandrians, and others from Sicilia and Asia, stood up and argued with Stephen. But they could not withstand the wisdom and the spirit with which he spoke. Then they secretly instigated some men to say, we have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and God. They stirred up the people as well as the elders and the scribes. They, then they suddenly confronted him, seized him, and brought him before the council. They set up false witnesses who said, This man never stops saying things against this holy place and the law, for we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this place and will change the customs that Moses handed on to us. And all who sat in the council looked intently at him, and they saw that his face was like the face of an angel. The word of the Lord. And speak to God. Our second canticle this morning is the Te Deum together. We praise you, O God. We acclaim you as Lord. All creation worships you, the Father everlasting. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, the cherubim and seraphim sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the holy church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only son, worthy of all worship and the Holy Spirit advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you took our flesh to set us free, you humbly chose the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood. Bring us with your saints to glory everlasting creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Hear our cry, O God, and listen to our prayer. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. 
for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Almighty God, who strengthened your servant Irenaeus to defend thy truth against every blast of vain doctrine, keep us, we pray, steadfast in your true religion, that in constancy and peace we may walk in the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretch out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. Please join me in a prayer attributed to St. Francis. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. I welcome your intercessions and thanksgivings. Prayers, especially this morning, for all those children that are in the foster care system especially those who are aging out of the system, who have never had their own family, but have shuffled around from one home to another. Lord, we ask that you continue your love and care for them, that you guide them, and that you help them find the path that is meant for them in this world. Amen. Amen. Pray for all those who are struggling with their health. Pray for effective and good treatment for all. Pray for all those who are struggling with the heat and with the wildfires in Canada. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Diocese of Truro in the Church of England. In the Diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the Reverends Mark Smith and Daniel Summers. Almighty and most merciful God, we remember before you all poor and neglected persons whom it would be easy for us to forget, the homeless and the destitute, the old and the sick, and all who have none to care for them. Help us to heal those who are broken in body or spirit and to turn their sorrow into joy. Grant this, Father, for the love of your Son, who for our sake became poor, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please join me in the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. 
Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Well, everyone, thank you for joining us for morning prayer. We're going to grab a quick cup of coffee, and then we'll be back for Bible study. We wish to uh, wish you the best, and uh, please do let us know you are in our prayers. It's been an honor to welcome you home to St. Peter's. And of course, walk always with Irenaeus of Lyon in your heart today and confront the heretics. <laughs> for now, dear friends, take care and God bless. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.